Are you ready to get woke? Welcome to the Woke as F**k podcast with your host, Alex Lazarev. I mean, it's so vast, it's hard to just like say what it is other than, other than that. So what's, what's, your, what's your interest in it? I mean, what brought, brought, what attracted you to it? Yeah, it's a good... I heard, I heard, I heard that the I Ching was like sort of a um, system that... That of all poss- possibilities, that's 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 what really interests me. It, it's a system of all possibilities, but I cannot, I didn't dwell into it to understand exactly how it works. So I would like to understand, like practically, how can that work in our lives, in our day by day lives? How can I make it uh, our lives better uh, in every way? Right. So, so the. I'm gonna, so I'm going to say one thing, then I'm going to say another thing. Okay. One is very practical, and one's more kind of woo woo yeah. <laughs> So the basic idea is, right, the I Ching as it stands today, because it's been evolving for like thousands of years. And the original I Ching, uh, they used to take a tortoise shell and get it very hot, and then throw it in water, and it would crack, and they would compare those cracks to the stars. And that was the original I Ching. So you can see how much it's evolved since then, right? And it's gone but was it like a metaphor of the stars? What, what, what was the... Well, apparently the, the, the wise man could understand the, c- the cracks and the stars and put them together and it meant something. Okay. I imagine it was very similar to the throwing of bones or other kind of random generated yeah. stuff. But right now, it's, it's evolved. But like a divination tool, you mean sort of a divination tool or... Yeah, well, well, we're getting into the divination part okay, in a second. Because right, the divination part of the I Ching is similar to the divination part of the Kabbalah, which is the tarot, mm. right? So you can use it for divination, but that's kind of not really its primary purpose. That's like a consequential side effect. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, here's a model of reality, and we can now use it to kind of like predict things, or maybe understand Is things. it possible to predict things? That's the first question as it, well. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. Okay. Phenomenal. Uh, it's but is it like a certain so so the destiny is made like it's something certain that something an no, event no. is going to happen in the in the future or is this a possibility? No. So so the I Ching actually kind of accounts for that. Right. But th- that's jumping ahead. So right now, right. So the I Ching, as we know it, right, it's it's six uh, six bind, six lines that are either a yin or yang, right? Are you familiar with? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I know, I know. I know. So the most basic element of the I Ching is just a yin or a yang, right? So that's the well, most let's basic Let's explain thing. that because people may not yeah. know what, what, what is yin, what is yang. Is, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. right. So there's, like a, there's like, a, a, like a masculine element or a light element and a feminine or a dark element. Notice the feminine is the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Yeah. Why is that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> not always dark. <laughs> the same with the magic. So, so it's basically a, a, the polarity, the yeah. most yeah. basic polarity of... Reality. Positive, negative, light dark, light positive, dark. negative, male, female, duality. Off. Right, yeah. duality. Right. Mm-hmm. So each one of those has qualities to it, right? Then what they did was they took three of them, three lines, right? Each line being either a yin or a yang. They made three of them, which generates eight possible combinations, right? And those eight combinations kind of represented eight basic archetypes. Uh, wind, wood, water, fire, you know, north, south, east, west, etc. Mm-hmm. And they assigned various attributes to that. So when you take two of the trigrams, the, one, mm-hmm. the three lines of time, when you take two of them put together, you have six lines, and now you have 64 possible combinations, mm-hmm. right? So, so what has happened what I just explained was two of the most basic archetypes in existence, right? yin and yang, and you put three of them together and you end up with eight of the most basic archetypes. And when you put those two together, one is considered like an inner trigram and the outer trigram, like an inside movement on the inside, movement on the outside. You put those together and you have 64 basic archetypes. Mm. So it's not like it describes everything, but it, it describes 64 archetypes. Of reality is right. that it, would that be like a, it's, it's a, an archetype is a pattern right yeah like form, form of a energy condition, a pattern a condition state can it be a symbol as well or not, not really. uh, well the archetype uh, so if you look at if you look at what the 
64 different hexagrams are, you get an idea of the kind of archetype they're talking about. So like the first one, um, or like, yeah, one of them is is all six yang lines. This mm. is the, the creative mm. force. Got it. One is all... Ying, oh no, it's all yang. One is the three uh, all yang and three all yin. Um, it's when, you know, earth is rising and heaven is descending. Mm. Okay, so that's like heaven on earth. Then you turn that upside down, uh, where heaven is above and earth is below, and it's, it's a separation. Mm. It's, it's not... It, it's like the two were moving Separate. apart. So, now, she is... This is, this is, to me, this is like one of the most profound aspects of it. So now we've got 64 hexagrams, right? Mm -hmm. And because they're just made up of yin and yang, for every one hexagram that you have, you have one that's exactly the opposite, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So that's really 32 pairs of hexagrams. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you kind of line them all up, if you look at all the 32 pairs, you'll also notice that 10 of those pairs are balanced, three yin and three yang. Those are stable hexagrams. It stable means it's like equal yin and yang. Okay. In different positions, but it's equal amounts equal of yin amounts and yang. Equal amounts of yin and yang. The interesting thing, so now we have 10 kind of stable pairs stable. of hexagrams and 22 more dynamic, because they're unstable pairs of hexagrams. And the really interesting thing about that is that is exactly the same model as the Kabbalah, mm. which has 10 static states. Sephiroth. States, right? Yeah. Which are the actual, when you look at the Kabbalah, it's the actual, you know, circles, right? Mm -hmm. There's 10 of yeah. those. And there are 22 lines connecting, connecting. them, which is the tarot. Mm -hmm. the, the tarot is, and the Hebrew alphabet as well. So you can actually correlate, you can map together the I Ching and the Kabbalah, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the tarot. So you can literally say this tarot and this I Ching. But the interesting thing about that is here is two radically different cultures in how they see the world, you know, the, the Middle Eastern at the time and you know, Asian, but they both end up with a model that's fundamentally based on the same concepts, of ten, at least 10 static states, 22 dynamic uh, connecting, hmm. or 22 dynamic states and 10 static states. Mm -hmm. So, now the interesting thing about this was uh, this is one of the more the little more woo hoo side. Is about a couple of years ago, um, I, I was kind of finishing something I'd been doing for a long time, which was kind of re. I wanted to reinterpret the I Ching, right? Mm. I wanted to start at the very very bottom and not use the the more somewhat moralistic. So, side note: Confucius and um, Lao Tzu wrote on the I Ching. They wrote like their interpretations of the I Ching. Lao Tzu's was lost. We don't have a copy of it. The only one that survived was, was Confucius. But that one is really moralistic. Mm. Very social, socially... Um, Oriented. Yeah, social, ethic, moral. And, and The Lao Tzu one was not. And it's really unfortunate that that got lost. So I want because because they had different current, currents, right? Like Confucius and Lao Tzu were, were quite yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, was, yeah, they, they, they had very radically different philosophies. Yeah, one was more like Taoist, and, and the other one Lao Tzu. Was, yeah, Lao Tzu was Taoist, and Confucius was like the the the, yeah. the, the government's philosopher. Yeah, <laughs> very rational, right? In his approach of uh, or more rational than compared. And keeping social order. Yeah, it's one of the reasons Laws why in the Ching it talks about it uses liberal use of the family order. The father does this, the mother does this, the son does this, the prince does that, mm -hmm. right? And he uses those as metaphors as well. So it's like heavy social social order. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to start it out, start it, redo it, so I think, okay, what is the most basic concept of the enemy? And then the eight, and then... The, and I actually, I wrote a program that kind of like reinterpreted all of the... And when I... <laughs> <laughs> when I asked the I Ching, how's it going? It was it was very clearly not good. It was like absolutely absolutely you must stop this endeavor. I mean it was it was like one of the most radically This reinterpretation that you were doing, yes. like it was telling you that you need to stop this yes, right now. Absolutely stop. Because this is not 
go no. any further. And, and how did you? How, how did? How did you like, get? There will be dire consequences if you continue. Mm-hmm. How? How did you? In, in, how did you get that, this information? Like practically, how did you? I, 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 I cast the I Ching about the work I was doing nah, after right. I kind of finished it. And 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 tell me the process. You know how how do you you get that information when you cast the I Ching and then? So okay, so the way traditionally the way that you cast the modern I Ching is you have forty nine sticks of yarrow, right? Forty nine twigs, basically, right? And you grab a bunch randomly, boom, and then you remove seven at a time until you have a remainder, and you write that number down, mm-hmm. and you do that three times, and then it gives you one number, and then you do that five more times, and it was essentially a a, a, a form of random number generation, right? Impossible to predict what the numbers. Then in the modern day, we kind of use coin tossing, right? It's, but that's not really random. So in my case, what I do is I actually use true random numbers generated from a random number generator in in Helsinki. Okay. And I, my, the, 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 I have a program that I wrote that actually goes and gets random numbers from a true random, a radioactive decaying isotope that okay. spits out random numbers wow. like all day. Which you need a license for, which I got. So, and it's really, really, really important that a pure, a hundred percent random. Random. And and my understanding is the following: the if it's it has to be completely outside the realm of man's even theoretical ability to predict. So it has to be completely yeah. outside any kind of Cartesian thing, like. In theory, we could predict uh, the way um, a coin is going to fall. I mean, but by, by looking at like, yeah, like a mathematical statistics or something right, like a if prediction. It was sophisticated enough, we yeah, could, we would be able to predict that if we knew all the variables and plugged it all in. Uh, so the in order for it to be com- in order for this to be uh, completely outside, if if we in, if we look at the very simplistic kind of idea that there's there's two worlds as far as the I Ching is concerned. There's the world of man, and then there's the, the divine world. In order to completely eliminate the um, man's interference, in other words, in order to truly connect to like the divine source, it has to be pure, absolute, theoretically randomness, mm-hmm. which is radioactive decay. That's like the classic theoretical random thing unpredictable it's theoretically unpredictable yeah. so doesn't mean it doesn't have a sense but <laughs> right but it's not a sense that <laughs> has that yeah. that is within the world within of our, our yeah so right. that example of the tortoise shell throwing into the fire and getting those cracks in the tortoise mm-hmm. shell it's that's, so random because it's not man's not doing it it's nature well so that's actually a really interesting point yeah man's not doing it it's nature but it doesn't mean it's I'm I'm still calling that pseudo random mm. because it's still determined it's still deterministic mm. based on the laws of physics expansion mm. contraction mm. molecular density all that stuff right yeah and then looking at the stars also it's deterministic we know where this you know yeah. the stars are not random I mean they're not moving random and maybe they're not even placed there but it's it's not within it's beyond our ability to understand but it doesn't mean it's theoretically random mm. it's just Really, really, really unpredictable. Okay, well, yeah. um, but the radioactive decay is, and I absolutely noticed when I use coins, when I use various other techniques that are not huge difference in the outcome. The randomness is super important. Yeah, I was just thinking, why is that the radioactive decaying? Why is that? Uh, well, I, you'd have to ask like you know Schrodinger or one of those All guys. Right. Who, All right. <laughs> so this, this, okay. Yeah. The guy who went just just got discovered that stuff. So, actually, it's the Heisenberg, the uncertainty principle, right. as to why we can't know where something is going to be at any particular time. Mm. You can't predict. You can't. You can't. Yeah, you can't predict the position or the, or the speed or the speed. Right. Yeah. That's the Schrodinger's. Uh, no, that's Heisenberg. Is it Heisenberg's person? Schrodinger is you don't know what reality something is until you look at it. So, the, so, the, cat, so the, the cat's experiment, wasn't it about the right. position? And, There's a 50% chance the cat is dead after yeah. one minute. Yeah. Is it dead or alive? It's in an eigen state, 
right? Um, dead or alive. Dead or alive. It's in a state where it's both. And it's when both. you observe it, it collapses into one of the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, How, and there you go. There's, there's the, the observation factor that it intervenes exactly. and, 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 right. and dictates the... Collapsing reality. Yeah, like collapsing reality really, in that moment. Right. The, the introduction of consciousness into a wave function causes it to collapse. Yeah. Apparently. That seems to be yeah. the way. So, now the interesting thing about the I Ching, so, so, right. so it was very clear, because some of the I Ching, when you're reading it, it's like, okay, the, I see that, I see kind of how the various interpretations came about, but some of them don't see it at all, right? Like, they'll, they will interpret the positions of the lines in a way that, that makes no sense to me, right? Like, the, the fire is under the wood, therefore, you know, make sure you tend to your animals or something that just looked out of hot. Mm-hmm. And then that gets interpreted into something applicable to modern day. Wow. But when I did the modern, my modern interpretation, where everything was absolutely, and you could reduce it all the way, you could, the path of, it was like, no, absolutely do not do this. Which really kind of gave me the sense that I don't think the I Ching was simply um, evolved over time by rational thinking philosophers. I think there is some sort of, um, you know, 3,000, gift Chinese legend, 3,000 years ago, you know, people came down in a, in, the, in a silver ball and taught them agriculture, writing, and medicine. Right. So, so this is the divine. And I suspect they probably took, gave me I Ching also. <laughs> so you're saying that this is a divine gift, I Ching. Yeah. And it is. It is not. It is not. At least the message I got was: it is not for us to, to to try and figure it out or to, to try to upon. improve <laughs> upon. Right. As right. as the universe. It's this finalized state of whatever it is, and uh, you can take it and we can bastardize it or and make it something else. Yeah, and, and I gotta say, in in a defense of that. I have seen many interpretations of the I Ching that are absolutely horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Like, you know, spiritual crimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And everyone's had their hand in it. Jung talked a lot about it. Um, Alistair Crowley did his own reinterpretation of it. Um, Dennis McKenna Terrence, based Terrence his McKenna. time wave zero on yeah. the I Ching. Uh, and personally, I think they were all off. Mm. I think they were, they, they were all mistaken. The, the base way that people should follow the most would be the most traditional ones, the, the first one, uh, or I would say the first few ones, that haven't been modified so much to the point where it becomes really unstable. So, right, but the problem is we don't have that base one. It was the, that was the, what you're talking about is what Confucius and Lao Tzu mm-hmm. had. Mm-hmm. We only have Confucius's interpretation. Oh, so we don't... So we don't really, and that's exactly what I was trying to maybe like reverse engineer. Mm-hmm. What was it without the moral mm. levels of, you know, the morality laid on top of it? What was it? Mm-hmm. Well, clearly I went down a long path. But so that's the question. What was that? Yes, that's, I think, the goal. But Yeah, maybe it's yeah. even a point. So this is... This is Sasha's favorite thing. This was my radioactive random number generator. Oh, wow. And it actually is radioactive. There's a little hole here mm-hmm. that if I, if I point towards Sasha's nuts, you'll, you'll never have children. <laughs> uh, but it really is. I checked it the other day. It's quite safe. Yeah. It's like triple lead lined with heavy sheets of lead. So it actually is quite safe. The whole, and it's all covered up. But this is what I used to generate random numbers to, okay. for a, a project that was called the Dharma Clock, to create a cl- kind of a clock based on the Dharma. So how do, you do, how, do you, how do you use it? Well, you do, basically, that's just your random numbers. So that's, your, that's your, the, 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 what feeds the, the generation of the hexagrams mm. with p- true randomness. And I'll put this over here so he doesn't freak out. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to make a big difference. Be the couch, yeah. if it's radioactive. It's totally protected. It's totally Jesus protected. Christ. <laughs> anyway, so that's the basics of the I Ching. There is one other thing, though, that you can do with the I Ching. Not only can it be divination, right? But let's say you throw a hexagram 
So you, you understand like the concept that if a yang line, so let's say you have a, 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 um, a hexagram that's like all yin lines, right? Mm-hmm. And the first one is super yin, right? Because each line has four states, yin, yang, ultra yin, ultra yang, mm. right? So if it's super yin, yin it flips and becomes a yang. Mm. It becomes its opposite, a stable condition of its opposite. So an unstable yin will become a stable yang, and an unstable yang will become a stable yin. Mm. So now you have a hexagram, 64, which is, let's say, the, it's number two, all, all yin, which is like the receptive, and the bottom one flips over. Now you have another hexagram, right? So the way it kind of works is this hexagram kind of represents everything up to the moment. This changing line is what you're dealing with right now. And the, the resulting hexagram is kind of the, the new direction that you'll be going. Mm-hmm. So you really have 64 times 64 states. 64 archetypes and 64 archetypes and transi- transitions kind times 64 archetypes and one transition. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's 64? I think it's like 12,000 or 36, I don't know. 64 times 64. It's a big number. It's a big number. 120,000? It could be. I, I think there's a 12 in it. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So you really have a, even more you know, archetypes to deal with. But the really interesting thing is let's say you know where you want to end up, right? You throw the I Ching. You like can, you have an intention for yeah, where you want to go. Exactly. Let's say you, you get the, like the, the, the peace on earth one. Right. You want the peace okay. on earth Let's one. Let's go. I think it's number 12. And it gives you the process to get there. And you throw whatever. Mm. You throw some particular hexagram that's not the one you want. You can actually kind of look at, look at how do I get from here to there. Yeah. Mm. And it'll actually give you the instructions on how to get to where you want to go. So but it's not just for divination. It's also for creation to create the kind of thing you want. And I absolutely have noticed that just asking the I Ching a question will kind of cause it to manifest, cause the situation to come to a, come to a head. Things will change very quickly. Just asking it. But it is important to state that it really is a Taoist philosophy. That's the ultimate thing. Understanding the... That we are in process of... Constantly in a... Of, yeah. of understanding, of walking, of trying to find the everything's always changing yeah. understanding how changing. that change moves moving with that being, change being in the present with the change yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. embracing the change in the moment right that's that's, that's that really the but point of it but I, I know a little bit about tarot for example what is the big difference would you say between the chain and tarot for example because it's more or less the same tool it's like a tool that yeah is, there is a difference because the um, with the tarot it's with the, the Kabbalah in general, it's a very linear, up, down, good, bad, kind of high, low. It's like, it's like a vertically linear system, right? Because in the Tower you have earth, right? And then you have heaven. Yeah. And you have, and you have stages in between. And there's levels in between. Uh, that doesn't exist with the, uh, with the I Ching. Everything is connected to everything. Everything's everything. connected to everything, right? And you can, you can experience the... Um, so, for example, in the, in the I Ching, the hexagram that relates to Kether, right, which is the very top, the Godhead, is, is not like the one that's all six lines. It's the one that's half six, half three yin and three yang, which is peace on earth, right? Because it's, it represents balance, or so what is it? It's, well, yeah, yeah, probably balance, but it's, it represents the two sides of it are peace yeah. on earth and standstill. Integrated and balanced. Yeah. So it could be one of the one of the two, and it stands still. So where the I'm going to be honest with you, I'm sure you guys could talk about the I Ching all night, yeah, but yeah. that's been enough. Yeah, it's just been enough. <laughs> so what would be one resource if somebody actually wants to use it? Is there a website that people can go and actually try it out? So that's a leading question because <laughs> you know I have one. What? However, <laughs> it's it's. Um, for Sasha's users only, because I don't tell anyone about this website, uh, the babblebrowser.com is the website where it'll throw the I Ching. It has the entire Wilhelm Baines on there. 
It's a research tool as well where you can type in any hexagrams that you want. Uh, and it has five different, four different ways of casting the divinate, casting the hexagram, including one based on an ancient Chinese technique, but kind of modernized where it uses the position of the planets. Mm. So, uh, yeah, babblebrowser.com. Um, and then randomizes. No, no guarantee. Random. It uses the random number generator from Helsinki. Okay. So, so no guarantees that the site's always up. Yeah. But. If it's it usually right. is. Great. <laughs> so, here's what's interesting now. If people listen to the first episode I did with you, or have read your book, they know you were not able to travel because you didn't have a fucking passport for 10 years. Right. And you're essentially a fugitive in Argentina. And yet here we sit now in New York City. Indeed. Miracles which is happen. which is which is fucking miraculous and it's great because I, I the whole time he was trapped in Argentina I was like scheming you know we could get you a passport from the dark web I'm looking around I'm like hey for five grand I can you could be a Dutch guy you know I was we, we were working on all no really I'm, I'm figuring out like yeah as long as you don't use it in the country it's issued it's totally fine it's yeah. a real person's identity they don't give you some Brazil, right? no don't go to I mean really I was looking I'm like we're gonna get we're gonna figure this out uh, or I was like, if I get super rich or something, then we'll just, we'll, we'll bribe someone, we'll get you, whatever. And then finally, one day he just calls me, he's like, yeah, that's it, I'm, you know, I'm going to be in the States. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, it's all been, it's all been resolved. Um, out of nowhere, too. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. So out of it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fascinating story. I don't know if you want to share, share the part of the story of how the fuck you got back in the country. What we should do is that should be a separate well, that's a whole That's a whole other yeah. episode. It's Jesus whole Christ. Other episode, yeah. That's a whole other episode. All right, so we won't get into all that. Let's yeah, just say. And, and another book. So let's say the universal line Free to sales now. <laughs> the universal line to get you to get you back in here. The universal wanted me back. So I guess the in, the interesting question is, what's it been like after ten years as a fugitive? What was it like being back in the U.S.? What are your thoughts on what's going on here? The changes, um, and uh, yeah, I th I'm sure people want to hear. What, what well, do you think? Uh, you know, I mean, I can make this really short. It's a shithole, <laughs> but beautiful at the same time. No, when you're kind of when you're facing that. In that situation, even though there was a big cultural change, I changed hugely. Mm. Going from, you know, uh, like an executive IT startup, high speed internet person to essentially like, you know, a bum. Homeless guy, <laughs> with no money, living in a bad neighborhood in Argentina. It changes the whole, yeah. your whole perspective, what's important. And not to, and also like the facing facing imminent death, which was also the thing going on. So it's not when I came back, it was like this is just not me anymore. Mm -hmm. I changed. I'm not crazy about the neighborhood too. It's just full. Of, it's too modernized. It's too it's too gentrified now compared to the. But you, to do you feel better now, like with yourself? I mean, with that change. Oh my God! Are you, are you more connected there was to a reason I had there numerous heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, so. my body was telling me stop it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So. So it's also the reason I'm going back so um, yeah so the change that happened it's not really a change out there in the world I mean there is a change going on out there in the world obviously but it really had more to do with uh, my change and I think that like everybody right everyone goes through some some experiences in their life where they they're forced to look inward because the outer world has denied them and it's all kinds of stuff you find in there and then you bring that back out and then you're a different person i'm a radically different person than what i was so that was very interesting uh you mentioned how that um you had a moment of introspection when you when you shifted uh, different environments and uh because you know your outside world changes uh but your inner world you have to come to peace with that and I think that's it's really it's a pinnacle point in I think anybody's life. So when they realize how to navigate the world where the environment changes but have to hold on to the specific beliefs in their inner world. Or and, get rid of them. Or get rid of them, yeah. Change them. <laughs> so and so my question would be, you know, going from going back to the US, you know, and, and having those this in, those internal battles, uh, how, how do you how do you find out which ones are, are best to benefit you in the new situation? Okay, so that's a really interesting question because um, I am of the 
philosophy, right? That resistance and difficulty, right, is really kind of the big, one of the more important assets that we have. Because how do you know what's important to you, right? If you don't have to, if you don't have to, the resistance that we experience in life, right, is what determines what's important to us because we make a decision, right? Because uh, if we lived in a paradise and the mangoes were just falling off the tree and everything, we, we wouldn't have to make those decisions. So the difficulties and the challenges in life is where you determine what's important to you. So how do you know that, though, until you get there? I mean, you, the, yeah, the, the universal you, not you in particular. Yeah. You think you know what you want, mm. right, when you're going to be faced with a challenge. Oftentimes when you're there, something very different happens. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right, right, right. It's because you, what you want is different from what you need. Or, or, what you, yeah, or some other part of you kind of wakens up in those moments and mm. kind of takes control, right? It's like, this is really what I want. This is really what's most important to me, right? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, we have a survival instinct, right? Mm -hmm. our, our first order is to protect ourselves. Right? But that's not exactly true because we will often sacrifice our lives for our, our loved ones and our, our children, right? Mm -hmm. So really, um, uh, the, the, in, in fact, you, you, you could argue that the survival instinct, our, our first purpose of existence is to love. Survival instinct is just keeps us alive. Right? But when it comes right down to it, we'll sacrifice ourselves for something that we love. Mm. It, doesn't, it, it could be really almost, not just family or kids, those are the most obvious, but it could be ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Look how many people died for their religion, you know, yeah. or, or country or whatever, for something that they loved. So really, love is the thing that is the most driving force in our lives, oh, yeah. not survival. That's the second most important thing, mm. kind of like the Second Amendment. <laughs> we don't have to get political now, but <laughs> how do you know? You don't necessarily know what that is until you're faced with it. Mm -hmm. And so all of the difficulty, all resistance is kind of like a constant it's the thing that strips away the dead and the old ideas and skin and desires and you know motives and intentions in your life. Mm. Um, so great challenge does a great cleaning, <laughs> mm. as it were, and you discover new things about yourself that you didn't know were there before. That's great. So we should not seek the easiest path in life. We should seek the most difficult. The one with the most resistance. Mm -hmm. We should be climbing up hills, not skateboarding down hills. Well, hang on, that could be misinterpreted and taken totally the wrong way. Okay. Because resistance obviously sometimes means no, 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 stop, no. That's often what resistance is. So. Well, that's the resistance from society. How often does society say no, no, no to us all the time? You can't do this. You can't do that. That's true. So it's so you got to differentiate because because again, when you're feeling into your your path, which is what I'm we've basically we've been talking about this so much, it's like when you get rid of the layers of bullshit conditioning, programming, brainwash, all this kind of stuff. What are you left with? What's here? What's yeah. in your heart? What what do you actually have to feel? So when you really start working with the universe, which is now now I'm in the process of surrendering to universal will, universal consciousness, just being a servant. Right. So now so at this place where I'm at, it's like, right. well, actually the whole journey is going, ah, yes, I'm trying to do this, but mm, yeah, it doesn't feel quite, there's resistance. Wait a minute, let's try. Oh, this is easier. Oh, this is going really, oh, the universe is supporting this. This is the way to go forward. So actually it's, it's going the way where there's no resistance is actually the universe showing you this is the way forward. So, so you have to be very different. There's, there's okay. completely different. Yeah, yeah, I, I can buy that. Different maybe, stuff maybe, going maybe on there. Maybe resistance is just a, an opportunity to learn about something in right. order to strip it away. It's there are two separate things. There's stupid. There, there, there's resistance well, that comes from the from the universe. That's like no. But then there's things that are difficult that you need to deal with, and that's why you're feeling. For example, an easy an easy example would be like, oh boy, it sure is a fucking boy. I feel resistant waking up in the morning, having a cold shower, and going for a jog, even though I'm overweight and I want to lose weight. Oh, there's resistance. Oh, the universe doesn't want me to do it. No, that's a habit. You're lazy and fat, and you need to you need to break through that resistance and lose the weight so you don't die of a heart attack at forty. You see, right. they're two different, they're, they're, you know.
There's well, good resistance and there's bad resistance. I, yeah, I agree with you, but I would also add that when you get to the point where you are connected to the inside, right, the resistance goes away because it's not important what happens in the outside world now. It doesn't matter. If the universe opens up to you or doesn't open up to you, if you're centered in here, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's a reason why most of the, most of the holy men and you know, enlightened beings yeah. live like shit. Yeah. <laughs> they live in caves. They live in the right. woods. They walk around with bowls to, you know. If they're lucky. If they're lucky, right. Mm -hmm. They get nailed to a cross. They get their skins stripped off of them like um, um, uh, well, Rumi's guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot his name. You know, horrible things happen to them. But it didn't stop them. If you're centered on the inside, I don't think the outside conditions matter to you. Yeah. It's but, but doesn't it have an influence on the outside conditions? I mean, your, 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 your so, inter interior, the way you live your life, the way you connect with yourself, does it make an impact on your exterior world? That's my question. Oh, in my personal view, uh, so the simple answer is no. Except for me, except I don't think the exterior world that we see is all there is to it. I think there's many more dimensions to it than what sure. we see. So I don't think we're, we're whatever dimension, the, whatever dimension. I'm saying, it, does it have? Is, is there a direct influence? I think it changes not? the way we navigate through the world, and it we're, 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 it changes where we are in the world. I don't think we have any influence on the outside world, okay. but the. The outside world is much I completely, more complex. I completely don't agree. Yeah, I don't agree. <laughs> Let's let him finish, though. Let me finish. The outside world is much more complex than we know. And we can be interacting. We can be moving where we are in the world on levels way beyond our physical. So when things open up for you, you say, oh, the outside world changed. I'm going to say, no, the outside world didn't change. You just put yourself into a place where that opportunity now becomes available. It was always there. The opportunity was there. You just weren't in a place to take advantage of it. I think it's both. I think it's both. Like, yeah, we, we can have internal shifts that completely change the way we view things and how we feel and how we relate to the world. That's all great. But I have had experiences where, just profound experiences where I can shift things around me, where I can attract certain people to me, push people away, um, energetic shifts. I mean, we, we, we in the outside world are actually one. It's, in, it's only, in, it, it seems like we're separate, but we're not separate. And I've had many examples of where actually I realized, oh, wait a minute, I, I made that happen. I made that happen. That affected me. And it's all, it's all a flow. And it's just... So let me ask you a question about that. Do you think that the, the way the world works, like what you're talking about or what I'm talking about, is the same for everybody? There is one objective truth or this is this is what you have come to understand that's your reality and that's the way it works for you and if i understand it a different way that's the way it works for me and it's like yeah yeah i think yeah so i think two completely different realities that are both completely true yeah or is there one objective reality that we all need to like i actually think it's i think it's a mix i actually think it's a mix while we're in this this uh, hologram there are certain objective reality kind of rules that generally speaking are true for everyone, but even then when I say, gen I'm saying generally true for everyone, but not really. Because yes, okay, if I take an apple and I throw it at fucking Matt's head, or you throw an apple at his head, or, and we, when we hit his head, he's gonna be like, dude, what the fuck, that hurts. Why, what are you doing? And the apple's gonna fall to the ground because there's a thing called gravity. And it's pretty much gonna be there. But have there been situations where the rules of gravity have been broken? You bet your ass there have. Right. Have there been, is it possible for something really creepy to happen where for some reason using some sort of psychic power or divination or, 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 or group meditation or whatever that I could throw it and that people have thrown an object and it went through a person? Has it ever happened that an option had passed through a person? I fucking bet you that it has. You see? So even though there are general rule sets, they can be, they can be bent, they can be broken because ultimately this, is, this whole reality is a subset of, of what? Consciousness. Consciousness is what's running this whole show. So if you're, if you're on a cer certain levels or whatever you want to call it, but, it, but at, on the highest level of consciousness, everything can be manipulated and changed and rules can be broken, even this reality. I mean, is this, this couch, is this really here? It's not really there, actually. So, it's not really there. I mean, we're all agreeing that we're sitting on a couch, but is it possible that we right. could get to some level of understanding, whether it be taking some drugs or high, or high level, whatever, mind-blowing something, where we could all decide, actually, this couch isn't here and it would literally disappear and we'd be floating here or maybe our asses would fall to the ground. I know that's possible. Can we do it now? No, but it's possible. So, yeah, I, 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 agree, I agree with all that. So, but what you're suggesting is... So I guess I didn't finish. 
Okay. I guess it didn't finish. So basically, there is certain objective reality that's generally speaking agreed to, but can still be bent. But then our subjective experiences, that's where we go. There's, there's no limits. Because look at Jesus. He was so in one with the divine, he could perform miracles. He was in his own, complete, completely his own world. And you can, you can get to 10% of that or 50% of that or maybe, maybe some, you know, I mean, he says what I can do, uh, any of you can do, so yeah. any of us maybe can get to that level. But there is, there is no limit. There's no, there's no every single person's reality as in its own level of belief and power. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's just, so you could be in one world and he could be in another world and sometimes they can clash or, or whatever, but there's no, there, there is no, like, these are the rules for our subjective reality. I don't think there are fucking rules. Everything Not really. Is real to the individual, right? and and that that's one of the times. Uh, one example is like when I try to explain that to somebody uh, who is new to the idea of understanding that there's different beliefs people could have that make their reality real. And one example I give is uh, like a psychopath killer, right? In the psychopath killer's mind, he or she can kill somebody, and it's completely justified. You know, in their mind, it's like, oh yeah, there's no problem. There's no there's no problem at all with this, right? But then, and the different person's mind is like, that's totally wrong. It's, it's like completely wrong, right? But uh, it, it's completely justified in the psychopath, the psychopath killer's mind. And, um, and it's real to them. It's, it's truly 100% real. You know, nothing could change their mind about that. And because of that, they live in a reality where that's okay. And um, it's 100% real for them. And that's the way they will live their life once they decide to consciously change their mind. But... Um, in that kind of example, I, I, I say that, you know, uh, people's perspectives as, as you live through life can change drastically, but, um, you know, it, it's all individual, you know. And I think, you know, we have that, that collective consciousness, and we all go down one way of how things navigate and work in, in the world, and that dictates our belief systems. But if you have a, a different perspective, you know, it challenges others, yes, but, um, but in that person's mind, it's real. And I think uh, just by having that kind of knowledge, you can truly see that you can, you can rig the reality that you live in. You so, can what? It? Rate it? Rig. 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 Yeah, yeah. Hack it. So, is, so is, it, is it all about just different frequencies? We all have different frequencies. We are it's so much more than that. With different densities. Different frequencies, but, different beliefs, paths, yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all frequency. Everything. In the end, it's all frequency with a certain amount of energy or consciousness or mm. some amount of information that composes that frequency. But the question, and let's not get out of the question, was, is it possible for you know, our inside world to change the outside world? Does it influence, does, do we have influence on each other in the end on creating our reality, our individual and collective reality? Does it happen or does it not happen? Because otherwise we all live in a bubble. Well, if you're talking about, in my opinion, if you're talking about the future, yes, right? Because the future hasn't happened. So we can direct, mm. we can direct us together, we can direct things in the direction we want. If you're talking about right now, no. This very moment has, what by the time mean? we experience the present, yeah. The, 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 the wave function has already collapsed. <laughs> it is collapsing every, every, every moment. Right, but we're only experiencing the collapse part. If we, yeah. if we manipulate, essentially, if we manipulate the waveform before it collapses through, like, conscious, uh, focused, uh, focused awareness, for example, like the people that, you know, they meditate in a certain town, they've done this a number of times, lower crime rate in a town, in a city, because everybody meditates on, you know, peace and love, etc., and the crime rate drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they're doing is they're manipulating the wave, the, the waveform. They're manipulating the, the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. When it manifests, it's kind of already happened. It's like everything that we're experiencing here is already happened before we got, it got to us, before mm -hmm. we experienced it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I know, I know what you mean, but still, I think that every moment we are creating it. Because well, it's, it's all happening at this. It's all happening now. I think we're creating and it down the river, up the river, and then it, it hits but, but, us but shortly potential, thereafter. Potentially, <laughs> every moment precedes every moment. So yes. every moment is creating the next moment. Agreed. I, I totally agree with you. But using the metaphor of a river, where we are in the river now, we're like our thoughts, our intentions, our desires is like throwing things into the river upstream, and then they come down to us. For example, if you could. 
if you could change this moment, we would all have the ability to change anything instantly right now. Change, change that gourd into a, a potato, you know? Mm. Look, you could do it. But we can't. Or maybe some can. Maybe some can. It's just our frequencies. Right. But at the, at the <laughs> no, level no, no, that, that most that, people can, that, 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 we can be on that. We can, on, <laughs> we can change things like further things that have not yet manifested. So that, I mean, isn't that, isn't that the whole concept of like co-creation, right? Everybody kind of creates a reality before it exists. And then that reality begins to manifest. Mm. Right? It kind of takes time. I, that, yeah. Or not. Really interesting. Maybe, maybe yeah. in the end it can be instant, instantaneously well, as well. It's like, it's like it, I, I agree with you, like maybe we are at a point where collectively we'll have to create an intention and maybe in one year, six months, I mean, that will manifest. But potentially we can put probably our minds in this moment and create each Potentially, I, that, I think that may be true. If I think that's a, it's, it's an experiment worth doing, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can tell you that, I mean, for sure, the collective is having a massive effect on what's happening. But also, an individual who's really connected to uh, the divine, uh, or you could point, oh, they're divine, it's everywhere. Mm. You can have scary effects. I mean, I've had personal experiences of when I was just in Ecuador and a really high, high level, sitting there with the universe, and I would ask for things and they would happen. And I've witnessed some small miracles and things like one time, I, I think I talked about it on a podcast where, you know, I was there and uh, we had taken a, a very small dose of San Pedro cactus just to get into our hearts. And so we were just there in nature in a very beautiful, loving place. And, uh, and it was a perfectly sunny day. And me and uh, Isabel, we, we both said, you know, it would be really nice if it rained so we could dance around in the rain. And I said, well, let's ask. And I took her hand and I said, hey, universe, you know, if it doesn't fuck with anyone else or it doesn't hurt anyone else, we would really like it to rain, you know? And then I got the answer back immediately, which was like, when the time is right. And then again, some time went by and we had a beautiful moment. We were cuddling. I said, oh, it's so great to be here. I love you, whatever. And then, and then I just heard one cloud go off and we were like, what was that? And it just, just showed up like the most crazy, badass thunderstorm you've ever seen that just fucking pissed everywhere, like completely insane for like 25, 30 minutes. Just nuts, nuts, nuts. And then it went away like it was never there, just absolutely gone. And then the next day, my friend said, hey, did you see that conscious rain that came yesterday? And I said, I said, what do you mean conscious rain? What does that mean? And she said they were, they were in an office and they, it was pissing down and they wanted to go to the shop to buy something. And they're like, oh, well, I guess we need some raincoats. They put the raincoats on and as soon as they walked out into the rain, it stopped raining just around them. But everywhere else it was still raining. And so they were walking. They didn't even need the rain, the, the umbrellas. They were just walking around like, oh, it's not raining on us. So she's like, I knew this rain was, was called in. And because when I called it in, I said, as long as the rain doesn't affect anyone or do anything bad, I, we want rain. And it came. Oh, that is a good and, story. And, and there was a, right around this, this hut that we were in, uh, on the outside, there was a little remote control electronic thing and whatever. Everywhere else on the wood was soaking, but the remote control, it didn't get wet, not a drop on it. I have a photo of it. It's dry. And I, cha and I channeled later asking, and it said, well, why is that a miracle? Of course, if you can call in the rain and you've done other miracles, why would, why, if the right, remote right, control right. isn't supposed to get wet, why would it get wet just because it's raining on it? That Come, ain't nothing. Are you kidding? <laughs> so, so we can, we can directly. Yes, yes. And, and we can agree that, and that's not, yeah. usually the, it's like it takes a bit of time for things to manifest into to, in, to collect. Done? To Done? Okay, all right. So we can keep going on audio. I'm still recording here. So this will be just on audio. Don't worry about it. Leave it off. Oh. Keep going. So we can we can all agree, or we can agree maybe that it, it takes time. Usually, f probably because our collective consciousness or individual consciousness is not ready for 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 manifesting reality in a, in 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 the now moment. But there's a possibility that that might happen as well. I think, I think I, absolutely, there's a possibility. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I also think, look, the, in like we're talking about the psychopath, right? Mm -hmm. So there's and there's a collective unconscious. You're talking about frequencies. So you've got all of these things are combined. Yeah. You got the psychopathic frequency. You got you know materialist capitalist yeah. frequency. You got you know guru frequency. All guru frequency. All guru frequency. All uh, and they're all kind of I don't want to say necessarily battling for real estate, right? But they're not all harmonious. No, right. and some so. Yeah. The, it's it almost seems to me like it's it is a constant, um, uh, it's a constant uh, shift between who's kind of dominating the collective unconscious. Right, and that's actually interesting you mentioned it because I know that when you have an idea, right, 
and somebody resonates with that. The minute somebody resonates with it, it becomes a hierarchy, right? You, you, um, the more exposure it gets, the more people resonate with it, it becomes a hierarchy. And the bigger the hierarchy is, the more collective consciousness you receive. And I believe if you connect, uh, collect enough of the collective consciousness, uh, that projection becomes more of a, more of the norm. Talking about aggregates, or the morphic fields. Shultrek says the same thing. Right. Shultrek so think, says yeah. when you dis- when someone discovers something, all of a sudden everybody else is like discovering it. When someone proves something, that mm-hmm. proves is discovered elsewhere, like like exponentially. Mm-hmm. So that his is the morphic field, but it's similar to the aggregor. So that one yeah. example that Sasha gave about the conscious rain, right? Uh, to, to, to come to that point um, of having the rain manifest at that moment, uh, you have to be really dis- like, disconnected from the collective consciousness around you to have that true belief that you want to manifest that, right? And to, to be disconnected from other sources of uh, consciousness to have that manifestation of that, that belief in, in your mind and your being of it becoming real I think that that's, uh, that's I, a very good key to uh, challenging you and creating a new kind of path although I, I wouldn't agree with that because we had a similar discussion on this the other day you have to connect with the consciousness of the thing that you're interacting with mm. the cloud the rain cloud yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the hut you were in whatever that has a consciousness mm. that's you have to maybe disconnect with the consciousness incompatible to yours mm-hmm. but you're connecting with another con- you're, you're connecting with some other sort of yeah. consciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. that can make rain clouds for example yeah but so it's, this it's, from, the, from the the collective consciousness but connect with the consciousness that you're trying to project uh, or maybe you need change. to go higher up like you just said there's a hierarchy right maybe we have to connect higher up the tree of mm-hmm. collective con- consciousness yeah. I think I think yeah I think consciousness would be one maybe it's just frequencies that dwell in, in, into that consciousness different ones and they all are important as well for us to sort of make a step forward you know we, the, the contradictions the paradoxes are, are as well important otherwise what are we what, what are we trying to surpass you know well that's a good question what are we trying to do? Where, where, uh, what, where are we trying to get? And what, what is the end game? What is the end of the game? Or if, if is there an end game? Or if there is an end game? <laughs> Should we even ask that question? Is I there mean, an end game? Maybe we're just spinning our wheels yeah. in a is great <laughs> big void of simulated nothingness. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Is there, an, is there a goal? We're programming. We're trying to perfect to perfect it. Is there, is there why? Is there what for? So... That similar question to the, about Sasha is like, is there an ultimate truth? Is there like a meaning to life, or is is it is there an objective meaning to our existence, or is the meaning of life whatever whatever we want? Because there is none. Is it just maybe it's just living? Maybe maybe it's just living for for you maybe yeah, maybe for someone else yeah, maybe it's it's, maybe it's about you know yeah. making money and dying. Yeah. Yeah, rich, you know. dying rich, Make it, saving tons of money up, yeah. and then and dying with dying. loads of money that you leave to other people who don't even care about you and just mm. are happy yeah, to have your money. Or, yeah, or may well hate you. Does, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, we have to kind of, uh, if there is no ultimate meaning to life, we have to assume that everybody's desires are on equal footing, mm. equally valid. Yeah. yeah. You want to be, you know, this person wants to become one with God, this person wants to, you know, Open a, open a, you know, warehouse. It's a, it's a good, it, it's <laughs> a good, it's equally a good, it's valid a good uh, point of motivations. View. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're. I think ultimately, it, well, you know, <laughs> it's it's a good as, about, as as creators, we are creating our reality in every moment with every breath, every belief, every thought. So I know why I'm here, and anyone else could choose to believe why they're here too. And I suppose so, I suppose when we check out of here, we'll get a little bit more information. But and I'm I'm <laughs> assuming that, but. Yeah. Then again, there have been a lot of reports written about people who have crossed the other side, out of you know, out of body experiences, near death experiences. In fact, there's thousands and thousands of yeah, reports. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. actually, the information coming back is pretty, it's pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. Which is there is a review of life, and you look at what you were supposed to do and what you did, and, and blah 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 blah. And, 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 and you know, and I think there's there's well, there's, there's, there you there's, go. But there's you not, go. But the, we, we know we don't just die. You're okay, never, you're never going to hear from the people who cross over. And just disappear into a black void of nothingness. They're not going to be coming back at all. They're gone. Well, 
I mean, if, if that, that happens. If that happens to anyone. Right. So yeah. maybe, 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 maybe for some of us there is an afterlife. Maybe for others yeah. there is none. Maybe it's just... I think, that's, 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 I think that's, that's up to us too. Yeah, that's another podcast as well. I mean, what is yeah, afterlife? Yeah, yeah. What, what, you know, what does that mean in the first place? What, what, People create their own afterlife. That's actually yeah. one thing. Yeah, but what is our soul? Is our soul individual? Is it collective? How can you put yourself in, this, in, in a soul will reincarnate in something? But is it your soul? Is it a collective soul? How Definitely you, another all good questions. <laughs> but how, do you, how do you think about that? You know? Let's go. So, so the you, question that I was going to ask you, the question is, wrap it up. You got seven if minutes. you woke up tomorrow morning hmm. a totally different person yeah. in a different time, you're a, you're a, a short, uh, ill-tempered, ugly person in East India in the 12th century, right? How, where, where, and you're aware that you're this person, but you're also aware of who you used to be. Right. What would be consistent between the two? Would, I mean, how would, that, how would that change your view of your soul, your spirit, your, you know, all of the things that we're talking about? How would that change that? Would you be like, oh, Cool, I'm a, I'm this person now. Mm. Or would you be like, what the hell's going on? No, if I was aware that I had been in another body, and then I was in a new one, I would definitely, probably try to understand why, why that was the, the first question. Why is it, ha- it happening again? Why did I come back in this new body? Why have I not learned? What what have I not learned in the other well, life? Well, not coming back. You woke up that way. Yeah, but I'm aware of, the, of, of, my, of my previous life, right? No, no. Tonight, I mean, you go to bed. Tomorrow, you wake up I, in the 12th century okay. as a short but am, person. Am I aware of this night then? That's what it, I didn't get it. Am I aware yeah, of that? Yeah, kind of like, like a dream, like a past life maybe. Like, a, you know, um, similar to the way we think of past lives, like, I would imagine. I don't think you would question it. Huh? It would, I don't think you would question it. it just yeah, well, I, 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 I agree. I think you would just... Uh, adopt the mentality of that time right right it's beyond the scope of most people because if you could we could do the same thing right now we could identify with exactly that same person if we're all really one consciousness right mm. we could be any we could be any of those people but we're not because we're stuck in our own body on our bi- biology exactly which i think and i guess i asked the question because i question the existence of a somebody's soul you don't have a soul. There is a soul. Collective soul. There is a soul. There is yeah. soul. Yeah, there is soul. soul. That's it. Right. That's what I believe as well. So then you would understand that you probably have some sort of purpose in your own body, in your own life. So to probably contribute to that soul. So do it. Find it. Go after it. But I think the, the soul is, is fractured, individuated into these smaller parts. That are part of that big soul, but they're smaller, right. and even those are extremely powerful. And even one of those souls, which is I think in some literature is called like an oversoul or whatever, right. that also goes into and so kind of like a tree. Yeah, uh, and it know, kind of breaks in. So, so one of those oversouls, even which is part of the, the the big soul, can be in multiple bodies, multiple timelines, multiple yeah. planets, multiple realities, that's multiple dimensions. Cleopatra and everybody was King George. And right, 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 that's right. That's why all these multiple people are like, no, I was Cleopatra. I was, yeah, yeah, you were. If you go up, we all were. We're all fucking Cleopatra. Everybody was. But at the same time, right now, the soul that's in this body right now is one specific, you know, it's, it's part of one soul group that's been doing certain work in certain ways and whatever. And also, I think that uh, each, each soul is really on its own journey back to, the, back to the big soul, back to becoming all that is. But in the end, and can you so, really separate those, those souls? Or is it not the same? On some thing? level, yes. Like, some like, level. like rationally, maybe it's easier for us to have this conversation and be able to, to make that, that separation. But it's easy it, now because look at us. Yeah, yeah. But is it really, really possible to, to, to say it's a different thing? Well, what? Different souls, you mean? Different yeah, aspects different, of the different soul. In, okay, let's put it. The, the, the different individual souls and the collective and soul, as you say. Is it really different or is it the same thing? In the end. It's both. <laughs> well, it's both. is a, is a leaf, both. I guess, different from the trunk of a tree? If we use the tree as a model, which I think is a natural, mm-hmm. organic sure. representation of such things. Yeah. How different is the leaf? Is this leaf different from that branch? I mean, it's, it is the same thing, right? But you have the same DNA, right? They have that's the, all, that's yeah, all, exactly. That's all. But yeah. it's still, but still, leaf. the same life force goes through so, them. So, so, but still, the leaf is also on one level, it's the tree, but on one level, it's not the tree. This is a leaf, 
and this is a tree trunk. And they're quite different, actually. Yeah. We're talking about the form. You know, the soul, the soul does it have But maybe, form? well, maybe there's a, maybe leaves have a, a soul, leaf soul, and maybe the tree has its own tree soul, and maybe in some way they merge, in some ways they're, so, they're different so souls also. souls has different forms? Possibly. Possibly. Or is it a configuration of soul in a certain way? Actually, soul must have some form until you get to the point where everything is one. Once it separates, it has to have but some form. But is it not already one? But we still... Yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah, oh, but that's, I, I, that's, I, agree, I agree with you. It, I agree. It's it's yes and no. I think, it's a, I think it's definitely a paradox. It's, it's just a, a paradox. It's a div divine dichotomy. It's, yeah, it's a, it's yes a paradox. And, no. and yeah. it's, that's why it's difficult to make the separate... You have to separate it and not separate it at the same time and put it together at the same time. So it's, it's definitely dif difficult for us to even uh, speak about it. Yeah. Maybe we have to just feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like saying your existence is... Absolutely, completely insignificant. You are just a speck of dust in an infinite universe, meaningless, pointless existence. And uh, conversely, your existence is the most important thing yeah. in existence. Completely, I agree. Both with of you these on that things one. are true. Yeah, <laughs> they're both, like paradoxically both, opposite. It's like quantum yeah. physics, right? Both states are true. Both states, it's, yeah, yeah. The yeah. cat is dead and alive at the same time. Right. So, <laughs> nature of, of, of existence is paradoxical. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the answer then. It's all a paradox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Congratulations, everybody. The meaning of life solved. In the next podcast, <gasps> we'll fail horrifically again. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but at least we, you know, we feel good about this, right? We feel, we feel happy about our, our, our totally missed conversation. You know? We will have to do this we'll several have to, lifetimes again. Just yeah, but I'm, I'm always frustrated at the answer. Yeah, it's because, always the same. Well, because, <laughs> because we're always trying to rationalize. Let's stop rationalizing then. Let's, do, do, let's try some other form of, of getting... Understanding, which isn't always rationalizing, yeah, but yeah, understanding. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's try another way of understanding. Maybe you know, have to ultimately be mad to understand. Or just mad, be open. Angry mad. or no, no, mad like out of your mind. Maybe you literally like have to... Or just, shut, or just find a way lose to... Lose your mind. Yeah, yeah, lose Yeah, lose the mind. Like, sort of lose, but not in a mad way, but just lose it, you know? Just lose it for, for a second. Lose it for a moment. And maybe something else will, will arise wow. in your life.